afternoon. <coughs> Dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will expand a little bit more on this concept. And uh, as Maria Grazia told us, uh, we are uh, within the project uh, focusing on dissemination of the results through this national uh, info point. Uh, especially in uh, that case, uh, she presented in uh, the project partner countries, Slovakia, Slovenia, Italy, and Poland. But uh, from the very beginning of this project, from the first uh, steering committee, we also agreed to uh, strengthen dissemination concept, going out of those countries, going to other countries of possible interest for two, uh, two reasons. First of all, this should really create, create the impact to other countries in the Europe, but at the same time, not only Europe, but uh, we have been focusing our attention to bring that knowledge and transfer that knowledge and dissemination of results to other countries around the world, especially those countries which uh, have a strong need to to uh, build their knowledge and to be linked to the global harmonization of this concept. So that's why I'm going to expand further on both the results and especially the, another, uh, another driver of this initiative is based on uh, the creation of a valuable follow-up for the future uh, initiatives. You will agree with me that no uh, project is a black box, is closed box. It should be something which is sort of catalyst, which brings then also the uh, possibility efficiently to expand and to strengthen this, this initiative. So this is the, the issue. I will present very briefly these uh, four components of my presentation. and. Uh, First of all, I just will uh, refer to how we continue on the, uh, on the extension of uh, national focal points or national info points in other countries. Then I would like to say something how we intend, and we are working already on the uh, setting up of what we can call informally global network on sustainable plastics. And for the future, consideration, a future discussion also which we would like to have here. Uh, probably uh, we uh, Perlin may agree that we can have a sort of uh, informal meeting after we finish this, uh, um, this uh, session. Uh, we, we can agree with Andre Kers and others to have a sort of brainstorming how those countries which are here coming outside of the project could in the future continue in this, uh, in this concept. Last uh, but not least, I would like also to mention some uh, possible key topics to be considered as, a, as an extension of a present initiative. And uh, I would like to indicate some possibilities of uh, future follow-up initiative, uh, what are uh, funding of you or could be funding opportunities, what are uh, other initiatives with which we can refer in the future. Well, just to uh, remind what I already said, so Maria Grazia presented nicely how the concept of national info points uh, is, uh, is uh, created and having and concern, uh, um, focusing on the uh, information which are then collected. And uh, we uh, have been going uh, further beyond this, uh, this, these countries, inviting other countries, as indicated here, from Europe, also from other countries, like Gulf countries, Asia, Africa, Latin America. I will mention later, later this issue. There is obviously a sort of limitation that uh, with the current project, we don't have formally funds for, for such activity, so which is lo logical. So that's why the contribution made already by some other countries like Romania, like uh, Serbia, but especially also there is uh, Hungary 
There is also Bulgaria and several other countries that are working on, the, uh, let's say, creating a basis for that. This is cost-free, so those people, I would like to just to thank them that they are working uh, as a volunteer, but we strongly believe that we will create a good basis for the f uh, further uh, um, creation of uh, impact around the, and around the world. Okay, uh, this means that uh, we have uh, already invited a key experts from those countries to, to become uh, what we call national focal points. And this is just reference basis for the future activities. So those uh, experts uh, are here and the, some of uh, them are here and some of them they agreed and they could not come and some of them are in contact with, uh, with us for the future activities. Uh, obviously, uh, I can say the key goal of, the, uh, of this project and of the future activity is the global harmonization uh, of overall sustainability of the complete ch value chain of bioplastics. I, we discussed this morning after the right question of our colleague from Indonesia that, uh, you know, bioplastic, we have uh, started this discussion from the very beginning, whether this is a good uh, title or not, whether this is a little bit misleading or not. I don't want to reopen now the discussion just to remind us all that Every time we have to be uh, very precise when we, when we discuss issue because there are some subcategories under what we, what we uh, adopted uh, like bioplastic. But I think everybody is able, if, uh, if you go to the content of the report, then you understand very well every term and every part. But uh, this is just to remind you that everything is uh, vital in the sense that uh, to be discussed and evaluated later on as well. Well, um, referring back to uh, the setting up so-called national focal point for global sustainable plastic network, if you like to, so we uh, started to invite uh, <coughs> the experts and uh, institutions, as I mentioned, we asked them already to have to provide several information beside of the competence, but also what are their funding schemes, national or international, what are institutions in those countries, uh, especially what are industries in those countries. It's something similar like we did and we are doing in Plastis uh, project, but this is something as a preliminary phase for preparation for the next phase and the next project. And obviously, what is the situation of uh, legislation, standardization, and uh, certification. This is a, uh, an important element. If you would like to set up new project, we need to know what is the situation there in, the, in this uh, subject and how we can efficiently transfer in the, fu in the future, uh, mm, let's say, experience and, and the results from the plastics to that. Now, on that basis, obviously, the, the last, uh, well, not the last, but the next step is then setting up this, um, uh, this network and especially prepare new project uh, initiatives in the future. So just referring the, to the countries, uh, <clears throat> I will be very pleased that within a very short time uh, there will be uh, couple of flags more on the formal uh, stage because Maria Grazia you mentioned and there is today Romania and Serbia uh, very often but I guess that we have here our friends from Hungary here and they are very far I would say with all the work so it's the only question of short time that they will be able to expand also and to create these links. The same is valid perhaps for uh, Croatia and uh, there are several other countries, they appreciated the results of, of plastics, like Turkey, Egypt, Indonesia, uh, India, China. So this is something what will be, uh, will be of value for the future activities. Well, uh, that's why what I said is written here. As you see in the, in the red, there are those countries um, um, here is a, 
Professor Pukanski from Academy, Hungarian uh, Academy of Sciences from Budapest with uh, uh, younger colleagues. And I appreciate their, their uh, very informal and efficient work on that. So they are also contributing cost-free to, the, to, the, um, to this initiative. Obviously, we have Bulgaria. We, have, we, we shall follow, in fact, also uh, some country reports during this, uh, this session, which will, will be followed. As mentioned, uh, Professor Piskin was not able to come, but they are also working on this, as well as several other countries like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, Egypt, and then China, uh, India, Indonesia, Brazil as well. So those uh, countries um, indicated in red, they have already started such an initiative of the creation, not only uh, knowledge transfer dissemination, but especially the basis for the future joint activities. Well, MAP is also here. You have sometimes different colors, but doesn't matter. And this is something what I would be pleased to see uh, that uh, our effort uh, has uh, had an impact and the results also in this direction uh, in the future, creating then a sort of uh, catalyst for the future activity. Let me just briefly mention, uh, we have discussed and also tomorrow there will be a sort of, uh, of discussion about other topics which are related to, uh, to our uh, specific topic of the plastics, which is related what we can call in the package bioplastics, which means several other things, and obviously whole value change. Uh, I am indicating here what are uh, other, other topics possibly for the future development or future um, extension of our activities. Obviously, the, um, the basic and most logical approach would be that with all the effort and the results uh, uh, obtained during the Plastis and, uh, and the Blastis uh, project, at the end, we are able to promote other activities which will be a sort of replication of this experience and creation of uh, uh, such a knowledge in other countries. So it's, I think, a very, very trivial um, um, aspect. Another thing, what uh, we a bit, uh, uh, we mentioned several times in the plastics, what we didn't probably uh, focus so much our interest is the issue of the uh, concept, what are the uh, scenarios of plastic waste? You know, uh, we always, if you promote something, that, uh, that there is a risk that somebody could consider that we are doing some sort of propaganda for certain things. But this is not the case. We have to put in the, in the concept of uh, uh, integrated approach, if we discussed uh, this issue. Integrated approach means um, th several things, and also in the includes also uh, waste management scenarios, and the need of uh, creation of possible um, decision support tools. We have been uh, working also with Andre several years ago on the, such a concept to have an instrument which can help uh, decision makers or other bodies to find the right solution. Because you know very well you can make an, a perfect biodegradable plastics if you don't have uh, available, let's say, waste management scheme. You don't have a resources for them. If you don't have uh, other component, then you are going to fail. Let me say just one example. It's very difficult to promote uh, sustainable biodegradable plastics made from renewable resources for countries like, let's say, Qatar or whatever. There is only mostly desert and they have a lot of natural resources. Another concept should be place there. So this is just a message I, I wanted uh, to stress. Uh, obviously, the wording integrated uh, approach and integrated action in the whole cycle of the 
uh, of the, uh, what we call sustainability, ranging from research, development, production, and use, and waste management should be on the place. Uh, it's a very evident that this is a part of the framework of renewable, uh, let's say, uh, of the bio-based chemicals or, or bio-based or bio-raffineries as a concept, uh, which is a logical part of that. So if we would like to show in the future uh, how uh, important and valid this will be uh, always a part of broad the concept. That's why I'm very pleased also for tomorrow there will be some our colleagues presenting uh, aspects of uh, uh, bioraffineries, whatever. I will just show you a couple of, uh, of slides and um, reminding you what I presented uh, probably two years ago in, uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, last but not least, obviously there are other topics which are of importance but very close to the new, uh, new materials, if you like to say. So it, not, uh, it might be bio-nanomaterials, uh, stimul-responsive nanostructure uh, system, and so on and so on. This is something which is again a sort of, uh, of package which could be further promoted together with our, uh, uh, with the experience of the group of this, uh, this consortium. Uh, well, obviously I mentioned this is referring to the first point uh, that um, in other countries this experience could be replicated and we are working on it uh, regarding um, destination support tools really they would be very useful even if such uh, approach is quite complicated. It's uh, very complicated to quantify and to, to evaluate um, several aspects. Going from sustainable plastics to uh, the extension of the concept to bioraffineries, bioenergy, biofuels, this is something that in the future we can find right place of this of the uh, uh, competence and expertise which is here, sitting uh, represented by 11 uh, institutions, if you, played, uh, if you put it in the concept of, broad the concept of uh, what we can call bioraffineries or, or green products or whatever. That's why I'm referring to my previous pre presentation just to refresh you that there is a strong, beside of, of the, our effort of bioplastics, there is a strong effort of our biofuels. And this is something which is linked together. They are not living in two different islands. This is something which sooner or later will converge in certain concepts, and the concept is based on what? On <coughs> sustainability. And just to refer to the, what is going on now, that we are... Uh, I'm very, uh, very happy, in fact, that the, the previous slides became old, obsolete, because now we have, we, I have to correct here and to put the fourth generation and probably very soon fifth generation. That's, that would be nice because we have uh, now very strong interest to, to promote this fourth generation, which is uh, based on the uh, genetically manipulated algae or some other uh, microbes to produce, um, to produce um, uh, biodiesel or bio, bioethanol. Uh, this morning, Maria Stella showed that the similar effort is in the production of uh, bio-based chemicals, if you are, bio-based polymers. Again, genetically manipulated organisms are very, uh, very uh, challenging instrument or target for the further, further development. Uh, there are several others, so I don't want to, uh, to spend a lot of time. Just to remind you, the concept of bioraffinery should be of interest uh, in Europe, and not only in Europe, in many other countries for the, for the future. Obviously, this is not an easy way there will be a lot of problems uh, um, everywhere, and there are already problems which we have documented. But in that concept, we have in the middle this uh, uh, place for 
polymers and plastics with a whole uh, range of products uh, ranging from f uh, liquid fuels up to very, um, uh, very specific products uh, used in medicine and so on. What is the, uh, the issue? The issue is on one side you have a, uh, on, on the right bottom side you have a huge amount but low, uh, low price of the product. But going to, to this side you are able to produce small amount which seems from the global production not very important but very high added uh, value. So this is something which again integrated in, uh, in the effort will be there. Obviously, we are still at the beginning of new era for the future of uh, what we can call, uh, uh, you can call it green chemistry if you are from the United States, they like color green. We are not very much using in Europe that because it sounds like political party if you say green. Nevertheless, the issue is here. You have then the whole concept I use this slide to give a PhD student to elaborate. Uh, you can elaborate one semester on, the, on this slide, showing what are uh, many options for uh, the uh, various production, various products uh, based on, on renal feedstocks. The same is valid for bioplastics, if you like bio-based plastics. This slide I've taken from the paper, review paper of our good friend uh, George Chen from China and Martin Patel, uh, our colleague from Belgium. Belgium? Holland. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, there's a concept of, uh, uh, again, integrated concept how this product could be developed. Uh, uh, last but not least, already mentioned at the end is, well, it is such a development and uh, process production sustainable or not? And again, you have then famous triangle, whatever you have, uh, Maria Star showed. Sustainability means uh, uh, economy, environment, and also uh, social aspects. You know, being chemist, I was uh, very scared about uh, what, what social science could contribute to, to this consideration. With Dusha, we participated in one congress in of World Academy of Arts and uh, of, of Science and Arts, sorry, uh, in Trieste. And we were quite surprised that those people working in economy but also in social sciences, they are really trying to define some impact, some, some parameters, how these things, if we say sustainability, could be further developed. 15 years ago, uh, sustainability was uh, only political word, nothing else. So used in the European Parliament, European Commission, and blah, blah. Now it's becoming more and more, still there is a long way to be, to be uh, uh, passed, but uh, I, I have a feeling that it's becoming, very, it is very difficult, but it's becoming step by step more concrete concept. Well, I'll escape, I showed that this, uh, uh, how are the examples of some uh, products, especially biofuels in the first, second generation? I will just pass to the, uh, to the fourth part, the last part, which is about the next five minutes. I will close there. Uh, I'm in time, yes? yes? I'm very happy. It's not so often, but now it happens, I hope. Uh, uh, Prior survey of possible funding schemes. This morning, uh, obviously, uh, yesterday we discussed also this is a very, I would say, internal issue of uh, those, all the partners, partners within uh, the Plastis project, how it's possible to extend the uh, funding duration, and I think that there is a general agreement. And this is not, you know, is a not, not like peanut. It's something which could, could really uh, increase the value of the results of, of this project, but it's a very uh, trivial consideration, but it's, uh, it's very valid, I would say. Then uh, we have uh, uh, a challenge to go for further 
and other calls. And uh, if you go step by step from the bottom, so you see first uh, Central European program in the, the brackets, if continues in the next year in the similar for format as the present one. Uh, before the lunch, we have uh, followed the presentation of our colleague from GTC, from the office of uh, European, of Central Europe office from Vienna. And uh, uh, it's a pl our pleasure to see that really that, uh, that sort of framework will continue, will have some, uh, some focus, will uh, include probably uh, most probably some other country like Croatia, for example, and this is something which I think should be uh, should be developed in this cons uh, in this uh, consideration. Obviously, we have a great challenge now. We are, I would say, in the due time together to think that we are going to approach and to uh, to challenge. Uh, next, all the uh, period of what we what is called a horizon, if you like, a horizon 2020 strategy, which is uh, already uh, uh, in the very advanced stage of preparation by European Commission, and uh, official will be launched in 2014, and there are also some some branches of that to go for. Some, um, some activities which are related to European research area or another one which are related to European Research Council. And these are uh, components or segments which uh, we can uh, further follow. Well, just this is the basic information uh, that uh, this new call all together will have uh, about 70 billion of, of euro for next uh, six or seven years. Uh, there are, uh, uh, I would say, several components, but for, for us, it's very important to follow uh, the position of science and, and, and research, uh, 24 billion. Then, already discussed here, and this project was quite a good example of how uh, uh, we are trying to make uh, links between the research, industry, and high-tech, and innovation, because this is becoming a sort of uh, keyword there, and uh, innovation, and there is another substantial funding for that. Obviously, uh, there is always strong interest of big companies to be inside, but uh, fortunately, I would say fortunately, there is still space for small and innovative, uh, small, medium companies uh, playing the role. So this is another inspiration for our, our group here to, to think about that. Uh, there are uh, always these key, key issues concerned, um, but definitely if you read it, if you go uh, into more detail, you will find that the, all aspects related to what we can simplify, uh, simplifying uh, with simplification called um, uh, bioplastics or related issue are there. I underlined uh, also the issue of international cooperation, which will be an important cross-cutting priority. So we strongly believe that this is the case, and we shall also uh, follow that uh, uh, idea. Uh, you know, uh, my, uh, my impression for the last, let's say, seven and uh, even worse in the sixth framework program uh, was uh, not so much effort done in this as it would be uh, necessary. I mean cooperation, real cooperation between Europe and other uh, important parts of, of the world. And uh, going there, just we would like to have something which will be uh, similar to uh, the specific format, which is Central Europe. You have another uh, several one, but now step by step, there is a strong extension of that, and um, what is called uh, uh, B regional cooperation. I will show you in the next two slides one concrete example which is under preparation, and this is. Uh, uh, cooperation between European Union countries and Gulf countries. 
But on, the list, on this list, you see that uh, our, uh, and we are, in fact, working in this direction together with China, together with uh, India. And also, I strongly believe that in Indonesia, please correct me, but uh, uh, Indonesia has around uh, 200 million of uh, inhabitants. It's, all, uh, it's comparable as a number of people to Europe. Europe uh, is a little bit bigger, but nevertheless, uh, this is like another region which we uh, expect to have a good, good cooperation contact. Re referring to what I said, that there is a already under strong preparation concept. This is something what I have taken from official document. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't design that. And you see that there is an uh, agreement between European Union and Gulf states, so there are six states like Qatar, uh, Emirates, uh, Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia, Oman, if I remember well, uh, to cooperate and to put the, uh, our forces together for such application. The same, I think, could be, uh, will be developed with India, and the same will be developed with, uh, uh, with uh, China. Uh, just let me mention one of the last uh, aspects of this uh, issue is that there are at the same time supporting initiatives. I am not sure whether you are informed about the existence of uh, EC Danube strategy. EC Danube strategy is a supporting initiative which is quite strong also from political point of view but also from the implementation point of view. Having a sort of instrument to develop some project with a prioritization. Another uh, initiative like Central European Initiative, which is in Trieste, another, there are uh, 18 countries, the first one are 14 countries. So these are also uh, some initiatives or frameworks uh, to which we have to, uh, to put direction. This is this uh, Danube region. And they find, so we will find all, almost, uh, this time, sorry, I don't see here Poland, but then nevertheless, uh, it, uh, it doesn't prevent cooperation with, the, with the Poland, but there are those countries. There are challenges for some program. And uh, last two slides, just to uh, make a reference, why, you know, my presentation uh, could be, could be uh, uh, too, uh, let's say, flying over the sky, uh, considered as a, uh, too strategic for the, what, what we are able to do. But nevertheless, we have had very nice uh, experience in the whole uh, old program of ICS. You know that I'd be very pleased to work with several people who are there here. Uh, Marek Kovalchuk, uh, Andrei Kržan, Dusan Bakos, uh, and uh, Ivan Kodak, and several others. Just because in a, the framework of, of uh, 10, 12 years, we were able to promote several programs in over the uh, 60 countries around the world. And obviously, this is also the good basis on which we, we have learned, we have the, this uh, concept. So that's why recently we established this center, which is a sort of informal follower on that. Uh, because we strongly believe that on one side we need to be very pragmatic and very concrete. On the other side, we have to have uh, very strategic goals for the future. Because I always finish with my, my presentation with our hymn, which is European. Uh, our friend, I am, not, I am not sure whether you know that we have a hymn in the European Union. And this is from, uh, you know... Beethoven Ninth Symphony, and this is a text is from Schiller, if I am right, that Alice mentioned were the Bruder, and we strongly be, uh, believe in that. So thank you very much. Some picture with the sea and so on. Good. Okay. Good.